Cycle 11, arthropods. Okay. Uh, lots of different kinds of things are included in phylum arthropoda. Um, you've got things like lobster and crabs and shrimps and krill. Yes, that is a blue lobster. They do exist. It is a genetic anomaly. So it's something to do with your genetics. No, it's blue. It's actually blue. Are they edible? Yes. The blue one? Yes. Arthropoda. So arthropods are it's a huge file. Okay, there's like tons and tons and tons of things that are found in this phylum. Um, in fact, like three quarters or 75 percent of the animals that species of animals that we've identified on Earth are arthropods. Okay, so three quarters of them are found in this phylum. It is the largest animal phylum. Um, arthropoda means joint feet. So these are animals that have jointed feet. Right, like crabs. Their little legs are all jointed. All right. So they are arthropods. Um, in marine arthropods, they're located all over in the ocean. Okay, so you've got pelagic arthropods like copepods that will be floating around in the water column, and then you'll have benthic arthropods that will be in shallow water, deep water, in the sand, on top of the sand, everywhere. Okay, also hard and soft sediments. So you'll have some that will like scurry around like sand crabs, right? If you ever dug for sand crabs at the beach. Okay, sand crabs live in soft sediment, and then you've got like barnacles that will attach to hard sediment. So they're everywhere, um, all over the place. Like the other phylums we've talked about, they've got three cell layers, and they do have a coelom, but it is reduced to just be around the excretory and reproductive systems. So characteristics of this phylum. Things that are found in this phylum all have these characteristics. They're bilateral symmetry. Okay, so that means that there's only one way to divide them in half, right? And get in your images. Um, they have jointed appendages. So it comes from their name, joint feet. Okay, so they have jointed appendages. Um, and those jointed appendages allow for them to have a lot of mobility, to like, get up and be able to scurry around. So if you think of like a, a snail, a mollusk, right? The last phylum that we just finished talking about. Uh, if you think of a snail and think of that kind of movement, right, crawling along on that ventral foot, and then compare that to a crab, right, a little crab spraying around, yeah, which one of those is more mobile? Crab. The crab, okay. So those joints of tendons allow for it to move around very quickly, okay? So it increases their mobility. They're also segmented, okay? So their body is divided into different segments. Uh, however, their body segments don't have repeating organs in them. So when we looked at annelids, okay, and, and the segmented words, worms, like earthworms, right, each of those segments had like metanephridia in there. And so they had like repeating body organs throughout each of the segments. Um, in arthropods, they don't have repeating body organs. They will have different organs found in different segments. So they've got three segments, the, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Okay. The head, you'll find stuff like the brain and the eyes. The thorax, you'll find stuff like the heart. Okay. And then the, in the abdomen, you'll find stuff like the intestine. Okay. So they've got different things in each of the segments. Um, and then a couple different kinds so you can see. Um, and then a reminder of the directional terms. So anterior towards the head, posterior towards the tail, dorsal, and ventral. This is a separator crab. Uh, it actually goes around and picks things up off the seafloor and like sticks it to its exoskeleton. So the decorator crab goes around and picks stuff up and like sticks it to the outside of its body to try and like blend in and hide. Yeah. They're kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, they also have a hard exoskeleton. Okay. So how many of you have ever eaten crab at a restaurant? Okay. Have you had to like crack through the, that hard shell of the crab to get to the goodness oh, yeah. inside? Okay. Yes. Yeah. That is chitin. Okay. That's the exoskeleton made of chitin. It's a sugar. Okay. So it's a sugar. It's a type of sugar. It's different from like what we're used to, what we eat, but it is a sugar. Um, and then crabs actually have an even harder exoskeleton because they also add calcium to that sugar in order to make it super thick and hard. Um, so they have this hard exoskeleton on the outside of their body that acts as protection, but it also serves as the attachment point for all of their muscles. Okay? Uh, so you have an endoskeleton. 
Okay, your bones are on the inside of your body. Okay, and then your muscles attach to your bones, and when your muscles contract, it pulls on those bones and you're able to move. Crabs and lobster and all arthropods have an exoskeleton, so the skeleton's on the outside of their body. Same thing happens, the muscles attach to that exoskeleton and they pull on that exoskeleton and the crab or lobster table. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so they've got a hard exoskeleton. Um, in order for them to grow, they actually have to undergo this process called molting. Okay, because this hard exoskeleton that's on the outside of their body, think of it as like a bone case. Okay, it's not going to like, you're not going to be able to grow if you're covered in bone. Okay, right? you're going to actually have to like break out of that bone case and grow. Yeah? Okay, so they're covered in this hard exoskeleton. Um, so that process that they do when they break out of their old exoskeleton and grow a new one is called molting. Um, and what they do is when they're getting big okay, and they need to grow some more, they actually form a new exoskeleton underneath the old one. Okay? So underneath that old one, they'll be forming that new exoskeleton. When it's completely formed, um, they will actually crack open the back of their exoskeleton and like shimmy out of that old exoskeleton. Okay? And um, once they get out, okay, I'll show you the video so you can see. They um, inflate that new skeleton up with water, so like bigger than what they were before, um, and then they wait for two or three days for it to harden. Okay, so when they first molt, their exoskeleton is soft, right? Um, because they need to be able to like shimmy out of their old exoskeleton. Um, and so it's soft at first. How many of you have heard of soft shell crab? Oh, yeah. Okay, it's like a delicacy, right? That's supposed to be super good and that you don't have to break open the shell. Yeah. Uh, Soft shell crab is just simply crab that's just molted, okay? And exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet, right? So um, they're able to break out of that old shell. So here's a picture of it, actually. So this is the old exoskeleton. This is the crab that's crawling out of its old exoskeleton. Um, this would be the soft shell crab, and then it would wait and hide for two to three days until that that shell hardens, that exoskeleton hardens. So uh, they kind of go into hiding. Um, this okay, is a horseshoe crab that's molting. Okay, we'll talk about horseshoe crabs and what they do. So, so let's watch this video. All right. So arthropoda. Uh, so we're in phylum arthropoda. There are like so many different kinds of things that are in arthropoda. Uh, and so we actually break arthropoda down into four subphylums. Um, the first subphylum is called Trilobita, okay, and it's the trilobites, they're actually extinct. Um, we know that they exist because they, we have fossils of them. So the picture on the upper right, that's your fossilized trilobite. Um, and they're all over the place. Uh, you can pretty much like a lot of the gift stores in the Midwest, you can go and buy a trilobite fossil because uh, they're all over the place. Um, so that's what they looked like. They used to be very common, but now they're extinct. So we're not going to really talk about, we're not going to talk about these because they're extinct and they don't apply to us, okay? But they exist. Um, Chelicerata, subphylum Chelicerata. These are going to be things like spiders, yeah. scorpions, yeah. ticks, yeah. yeah. horseshoe crabs, okay. sea spiders, okay? Um, like spiders that walk on water. No, like spiders that live in water. What? Yeah. Hold on, I'll tell you. Okay. So Chelicerata. Okay. The reason why they're all placed into this subphylum is because of the way that their mouth is. So their mouth is all. Uh, they all have like the same kind of mouth where they Chelicerata that they use to like stab things and suck out the insects. Okay. Because like spiders. Um, Crustacea. So this is the one that we're really going to focus on because these are marine. Okay, so these are all going to be your lobsters, shrimp, crabs, okay, krill, all of that kind of stuff. And there's over, over 35,000 species. And then subphylum Unirania, um, these are all your insects. Okay, so all insects are considered to be arthropods, which is one of the major reasons why um, this is the largest phylum in the world. Okay, because insects, there's tons of them. Okay, so here's our four subphylums. Okay, and so we're going to take and look at some classes of these subphylums, two of these subphylums. We're going to look in Chelicerata, we're going to look at Class Meristomata and Pycnogoimedia. Um, those are going to be horseshoe crabs and sea spiders. Um, and then Malacostraca and Maxillopoda, those are going to be things like barnacles, 
and all of your crabs and lobsters and stuff like that. Okay? And crustaceans. <laughs> Maris tomata. Okay? Maris tomata. These are horseshoe crabs. How many of you have ever seen a horseshoe crab? Um, in person. person, yeah. Okay, they're, you won't see them here on our coast, on the west coast. They're only found on the east coast and in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but they're pretty familiar to people who live there because, or around the beaches at least, because they actually come up onto the sand in order to lay eggs. Okay, so um, here's what they look like. Uh, you can see they've got like eyes. I think they look like little mini tanks, kind of. They're kind of cool looking. Um, so they spend most of their life out in the water in sandy areas where they're going to be finding food. Um, but when it's time for them to reproduce, they all come up onto shore to lay their eggs all together. Uh, and when they do this, people can see them, but also they serve as a really, really important food source for migrating birds. So when they lay the eggs, the okay, eggs have lots of nutrients in them, migrating birds will stop and eat some of these fertilized eggs. And they, when the birds stop, they can double or triple their weight just by eating these eggs. So it actually gives them enough energy to continue on their journey and make it all the way to the poles or wherever they're going. Okay, so these are hugely important for a lot of different bird species as well. Um, this is not in your notes. This is just because horseshoe crabs are kind of cool. Um, so they have four eyes. Those two compound eyes that you saw on the top of their head, um, like in this picture. Okay. Do you know what a compound eye is? Okay. Uh, like a fly's eye. Like a fly's eye, yeah, exactly. So it's got like facets on the eye, so they kind of see like broken pictures, kind of. Um, so they have comp two compound eyes on the top of their head, and then they've got two simple eyes, basically see like light and dark, on the underside next to their mouth. Um, and they do have five pairs of walking legs. They eat all sorts of different benthic invertebrates. They can live for 30 years. Here's what the underside of one looks like. Uh, so you can see what it looks like underneath. And um, what's cool is that their blood is based on copper. Okay, so our blood, we have iron in our blood in order to be able to carry oxygen. And so when iron and oxygen interact, it turns red. Okay, so our blood is red. When copper and oxygen interact, it turns like a blue-green color. Okay, so think like Statue of Liberty, right? Statue of Liberty is made out of copper, but it's the green color because it's oxidized. Okay. Yeah, that's the color of their blood. So they've got like a blue-green color blood. So they have blue blood. It's crazy. Anyways, they're cool. Um, they're two simple eyes to get up here. Right? That's what they look like. Okay, Pycnozoonidia. Mean dense gonad. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 They don't take much. They're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They don't take much. They're, they're sea creatures, so they're not going to catch like flying insects. They're going to catch and eat things that are already set out. Um, they are found all over, but they really, really are more densely found in the polar region. Um, they do have some kinds of sea spiders that can be found like in the intertidal zone living inside of like a, um, like a anemone? 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 Okay. Yeah, they live in water. You can see this one here on the right. Okay, so some of them can be like large. <laughs> They've got long skinny legs. They're weird looking. Um, no, they're not going to harm you. So you can find some kinds like smaller species inside like anemones and stuff in the intertidal zone around here, but yeah, not as much. Like so here, I have a video so you can actually see what they look like. I know, your favorite.